Ladies, how are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sim. If this is your first time of coming across this channel, you heart, kindly smash that subscribe button and turn your notifications so you are notified each time I upload. And please give this video a thumb up. I appreciate you all so much and I am saying a very big shout out to every one of you for all the love and support you are showing me here with. I am grateful and you all are super sweet. So today we'll be talking about something very important and it's about what happened to a black woman. She actually went to an Asian store to, uh, to get a refund about a product she bought or something like that but they insisted they said they were not going to give her a refund so she was asking let her take something equivalent to the, the refund the uh the man refused and from there i mean something i mean escalated and the man wanted to strangle the woman and the woman was screaming call the cops call the cops and all that the video is in the comment section click on it and you're going to see a lot of people actually came out to talk about it and I am saying a very big shout out to every black man that pulled up because they all pulled up straight up. I mean, I think something like that has been happening in the community, in community, having problems with Asian stores and all that. I mean, the men all came through. I ain't going to lie to you people about this. And they were protecting the women and all that. I mean, it was a very peaceful, uh, peaceful protest. And you all know already how Asian stores, like, you know, them and black community right from the onset it looked like it's the same thing that is happening in uk and also in america like it's it's like the same thing you know asian stores opening in black neighborhoods and ripping them off they do not even regard them for any reason or something but what i am going to say in essence is please i think it's time we stop giving our money to asian stores let's spend our money in our own community it is going to help us in every shape any everywhere economically and all that i mean that money they've been racking from black black people it's time we get all that money back i mean let's open stores in our own neighborhood and now it looks like a black woman cannot even speak these days like you know when you speak you are an aggressor because a white woman said uh, it is not about race like how is that not about race that black uh, some women are black women are aggressors and all that I am rolling this clip. We'll come back to talk about it. Let me know what you all think in the comments section. So straight up, let's make one thing abundantly clear. No one is more racist than the people that invented racism. That's the palm colored people, right? With that being said, some of the worst racism, in your face, aggressive, outward racism I've ever experienced came from South Asians. And still, I won't say that all South Asians are racist because then that would be prejudice, right? So instead, I'm going to ask a question. Do you think me as a black woman can go to Southall and open a store selling saris and have it be successful? I think we all know the answer to that. What happened to this woman triggered me. I hope she heals from this because she went into the store for a refund and got treated like a fucking animal because she's black. And anyone who says this isn't about race, check your ignorance. I hope she heals from this. I really do hope she heals from this. And a bigger conversation about race needs to be had between the South Asian community and the black community. Because the black community for years have been taking aggression from the South Asian community. And the reason why it's kind of overlooked and people brush it off is because we're both people of color. But they are the ones selling to people they don't like. Guys, we contribute billions every year to their businesses every year and i get it convenience you know they've managed to saturate a market towards our demographic it's a very good business strategy you find the market you find the area where there's a huge demographic of black people and you sell to them this way you never go out of business i don't know why black people behave as if though this is our only option though it's not support black businesses yeah you might have to do the legwork and find them but at least you won't get treated like an animal and you won't be contributing to a business that has absolutely no respect for you or your people why would you go where you're not wanted and no i'm not victim blaming because what happened to this woman is just not right you don't get to go into the store for a refund and then get treated what the fuck? he held her like a dog Let's just go back to that question I asked earlier. Do you think me as a black woman can go and open a store in Southall selling saris and have it be successful? 
No. The answer to that is no. And we all know why it wouldn't be successful. Do the legwork. Find the black-owned businesses. It's time to go where you're wanted. Contribute towards black businesses. Let, it's time for us to saturate the market. Don't you think? After all, it's black hair products. It's black hair products. They don't use the products they sell. They don't use the products they sell. And half the shit ain't even good for our hair anyway. Oh, this upsets my soul. It really... I think this whole incident at the hair shop in Peckham is part of a wider conversation about how brands and businesses and organisations make profit off of black consumers, but in reality have no regard for said black consumers despite making money off them. Every black woman knows the feeling of entering a black hair shop owned by non-black people to purchase black hair products and just the treatment you get like it's always very off another example on like a less consumerish level is the hostility the black event organizers face like the recesses the dlts the hostility they face when wanting to put on black events play black music in spaces and venues that aren't owned by black people those are both like micro quite local examples but even on a wider scale this happens all the time if you remember the tart brand trip that happened a few months ago that had tiktok going crazy Tarte, a makeup brand it invited black influencers and content creators onto this trip again it looks fantastic yeah they're championing black creators but in reality they treated those creators horribly it was financially beneficial to have those people present but there was no value for them as black creators. That's the thing, like most of these brands and businesses, they value black consumerism. They just don't value black consumers the same way and there is a difference. Why for me, like Blackout Tuesday was air, <laughs> complete air because it was some of these brands that we had to come and drag by the singlet and say, say something, support us. And the thing with that as well is they do that because they know they can get away with it because we'll still show up and we'll still buy the products. Like this guy puts his greasy, fat infested fingers around this lady's neck because he knew he could get away with it. So I know it feels like this was just a one-off situation, one boss man on the street in Peckham, but realistically it's indicative of a wider system of brands and businesses who value black consumerism, but they don't place value on black consumers and they do that because they know they can and there's no repercussions. Do you know what? You got to be related to someone from that shop because this is the fifth comment that you've left justifying that man's actions. The man's actions was disgusting, yeah? And I did not see her acting like a man for him to be using such force on her by strangling her and restricting her the way he was. Do you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, his actions were disgusting and clearly you are not of colour because you cannot even empathise and see where I'm coming from. You want to be leaving stupid comments like this and another comment about, oh, um, she was being aggressive. You don't treat a woman like that, whether black or white, okay? But I'm defending black women because black women are the bigger shoppers in those hair and beauty shops, which maybe you are part of. Don't leave dumb comments on my page. Ladies, boycott the shop or close the whole shop down. Simple. So, I don't know if you've seen this video going around. This lady was assaulted inside of a hair shop in Peckham. As much as I can go on and talking about how black women across the world are mistreated, I want to focus on the positive this time. The community showed up and showed out the streets of Peckham were literally filled with peaceful protesters. Shout out to my steppers, shout out to Raspic, shout out to Antoine who was there from ITV. Just everyone from the community showed up and it was just a beautiful, beautiful thing to see that out of many, we are one people. Even though the lady has been arrested and the shopkeeper has not been arrested, but any So apparently Bushra was trending on X Twitter <laughs> for the first time ever and not for Bushra and Bradford. But apparently my position on a situation in Peckham. So for those of you that don't know, 
uh, a situation took place in Peckham, which was owned by a South Asian man, and he sells products for the black community. And we know that the demographic in, in Peckham is majority of black. I have family members that have lived in Peckham for years. And so what happened is uh, this woman went in, customer, she wanted a refund. Um, the owner offered her an alternative, which is a credit note. She threw her toys out of the pram. They had an altercation. It got it just got really really bad in the end of it she wasn't happy she started helping herself to stuff from his shop he tried to stop her and in the midst of that he's deemed a violent man so the shop owner was obviously trying to protect his business he wasn't quite sure what to do with this woman because the way he describes it is she went absolutely berserk and mental he ended up trying to restrain her because the police were also on their way he didn't want her to leave the shop with products that she did not pay for or were uh, worth more in goods versus the amount of the credit note that he was willing to offer her at the time look they both need to take responsibility for what happened but the momentous part of it was when he was trying to restrain her his hands veered from her shoulders up to her neck which looked like he was trying to strangle her just after she had smashed his head with a shopping basket. Let's just start by saying that who made the entire discussion about race? Because after speaking with Sahel, who's the owner of the store, he categorically claimed that nothing about that situation was racially motivated. But I'll tell you, it was the original tweet that was posted. That was posted by a young woman, and I'll just point out it was a black woman. And she was the one to mention that she was tired of the South Asian community treating black women this way. So if anybody's a race beta, it's not me. It's not people in the comments. It was the original tweet. So I would just like to clarify that. But actually, what also is quite interesting about the whole situation is how nobody speaks about how the young woman herself was the aggressor. And I know... I know that many of you will not like my position on this, as I have seen on X, but we have to say it as it is. Are we living in a climate where we can no longer call women aggressors? Are we so frightened of what the repercussions are going to be when women are the actual aggravators? And in this case, it was entirely that. Where are the days where property and shop owners can protect their rights their products their stores you have individuals walking in to somebody else's trading place and behaving in the way that they are behaving without expecting any consequences or repercussions now let me just preface and say nobody is condoning any type of violence in this situation sahel totally admitted that yes in that moment for the five seconds so for the five seconds that his hands ended up round her neck, fine, nobody's disputing that. But Sahel has openly admitted that that type of restraint at that moment was sort of taking a little bit extreme because of all of the steps that happened before that everybody saw. Because let's not forget that there are other parts of this story that do exist, which we have seen throughout the videos. The most frustrating part is when you have an entirely different perspective on something, which you may not agree with, you are not allowed to say it because you are deemed a racist. I am not racist one bit. I come from an ethnic community myself. The black community is also a minority group in this country. So how about we just don't make it about race and we talk about this as an independent so is it fair to say that feminism yet again plays an entirely interesting role in this? On one hand, we want to be feminists, but yet there are women who want to behave like men, but want to be treated like women. You get treated like a woman when you behave like one. Etiquette, decorum, respect. There is a social contract, technically, when you are in places of retail, the way that you speak to each other, what you might demand, what you think you're entitled to versus what you will actually receive. And there is a way to deal with that if you do not get what you want. 
I have something really interesting to say. When did we get to the stage that we have this expectation of men 100% of the time to have restraint when women are being aggressive towards them? When you're having baskets smashed in your head, when you think you are entitled to totally ruin somebody's shop shelves, help yourself to whatever items that you may want from this shop, because what are you going to do about this? This entire situation has turned into a fiasco. Nothing about race, all about entitlement, all about how women think that men are always violent and they are always the aggressors. That's the situation that we are in now. So maybe it's fair to say that it's time that we took a balanced view on everything. And if he needs to be called out, she also needs to be called out as well. That's the fair way to do it. So I'm just going to end it on, end it on that note because um, there's really not much to say. And um, people should take total personal responsibility for the way that they behave. Last little note for those people who are questioning the police's involvement. Uh, Sahel actually called the police immediately, straight away. The first video shows that he was actually on the phone to the police. Now, we can say that if there's any criminality, uh, any abuse and violence that took place, that the police can investigate this, which I believe that they are doing. And currently, as it stands, they're not pressing any charges towards Sahel. In fact, one of the lady officers, after viewing the CCTV footage, asked Sahel whether he wanted to press charges against her. So that's also telling you a lot about the situation. So... Before you make up your minds, it's really important for everybody to know every single part of the story. And let's just stop making this about goddamn race. Stop it. It's freaking frustrating. So supposedly, I violated community guidelines because I put a video up saying that the woman who was strangled in Peckham, that if she was a white woman and it was the black man who was strangling her, the whole country would have been up in arms and that man would have been arrested. Instead, all we've got is all the racists coming out, even comments about bitch him up or something. But last time I checked, where in the world do you get strangled for robbing something? She didn't rob anything. Anyway, from what I can see from the first bit of the video, right? She had a receipt. She went to the man to do a return. Like, consumer rights are real, even in her shops. There's still, it's the UK law, but no. Community guidelines, TikTok, you're showing your EDL origins here. I'm starting to, to think that certain sections of the community are being discriminated against TikTok. You can't sense. Let's get to the point of this. This man, big blonks man, you see how big he is compared to her, decided to put his hands around a black woman's neck. A woman's neck. I'm outraged and I have always said this to myself like when I go to packs or supergrows and stuff because I need black hair products but I don't see any black people selling hair products in black shops and I live in East London if you go to the hair shop the afro hair cosmetic shops yeah there's no black people selling the products that bothers me now let me tell you why this bothered me today before I even saw this video so I went to Super Grows in East London I always go there right but and they're so sweet in there they're so nice and they do so much for the community and everything yeah but I went in there like you can see my hair I did a big chop I will be showing all of that anyways um I did a big chop so I needed to style my hair I've also dyed it black back black I went in there and so sweet she goes do you need any help and i was like no i'm just looking for some products i know kind of know what i want so she was like okay well let me know if you need any help so i was like okay cool so i was looking around again i was with my little boy and um i was like okay maybe she can help me i said i need um some products to do finger waves in my natural hair so then she was like oh okay so you need some extensions i was like no i don't know it's my natural hair i'm doing finger waves and she goes, oh, I'd have to Google what that is. So I was like, oh, okay. 
bearing in mind that 99.8% of the products are all Afro hair products. Now, I don't know what to do because, like, I was so, I was actually annoyed because I'm like, you, you asked me for help, but then you said you Google what I need help with when I have Google myself. Yes, you're being innovative and using the tools, but it's like, you should know this working in this environment. You know what I'm saying? And this is why I'm, I'm not, I don't know what I'm, I don't know, I'm just really outraged about this Indian man putting his hands on a black woman like that. And it's like, we give you jobs. We purchase most of your products because you know we need it. You know we need it. And you take advantage of us like that. I'm boycotting too. Fuck it. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Amadai Shakur. So a woman of my skin tone was assaulted in Peekum Hair and Cosmetics. Okay, let's get into it. Now I'll be showing clips of the video. I can't show the entire thing because of what he was doing. As you can see here, he has his hands around her neck, literally choking her. Now this all stemmed from the fact that she came in and asked for a refund for some items she had previously purchased. And somehow it escalated into this. Please pay attention. Okay, that's customer service. That's how they treat you. At the end of the day, people of my skin tone really need to stop going to these establishments where they're disrespected, assaulted, humiliated, and the police are called on them when they haven't even done anything. Okay, you come in and ask for a refund fund and this is how you're treated and these places are always in our neighborhoods these establishments they make their money the bulk of their money off of people of my skin tone uh, but they give us no respect and the people like me need to really stop going there okay please pay attention I mean, it's not just struggle with me get the fuck off me one of my patrons just sent me this information yeah a couple of them and them are onto it already yeah no online talking tomorrow we pull up and so these incidents continue to occur, and that's mainly because women of my skin tone continue to patronize these establishments. You may have to drive a little bit further, spend a few dollars more to go somewhere else where you're treated with respect, and uh, they appreciate your business. Okay? With that all being said, everyone needs to boycott Peekum Hair and Cosmetic. If it was a different race, they wouldn't have an attitude and act out the way she did. Maybe that had a part to play. Darling. Attitude, bad attitudes are in every race. Stop, please. Let's just make a difference, okay? You stop labeling attitude. So this is all I got and for the stitches. I love the way the men pulled up because when they saw the video, now let me tell you something. I'm going to put the video in the comment section so you all can click out to save it. The woman actually came to uh to get a refund from the product she bought, but the man said he's not gonna okay. He said, Okay, can I take uh other things airport to the month the um what I, you are supposed to refund me. That was where the problem started. And from there, the next thing we know what was going on, she's, the man started strangling her. And uh, she, the woman was like, why not call the police? Instead of strangling me, call the police. And the other thing is that other people were actually there watching and, uh, you know, not saying. It was also black people that pulled up over to, like, you know, stepped into, to, like, you know, calm the whole thing down and all of that. Now, I am going to say this. I don't know how we all started and all that, but the clip at least explained a little bit to us. Like the white woman said, if it were a white woman, the man would not have done it. And that is true. And the other woman was saying that uh, the hand, she was, okay, sorry, he was holding her and his hand flew to her neck. What kind of lie is that? That is a very fat lie. And now when women start standing up, when a woman is standing up for herself, they are going to say that the woman is the aggressor. I just don't do not understand this so now the main thing is women if anything is happening just close your just shut up even when they want to sleep, just shut up so that you will not be the aggressor so my my advice on this is let's stop going to where we are not wanted because I do not understand how it looks like it's the same thing that is happening in America that is also happening in UK they said that all their neighborhood are all Asian stores. And in America, all the black neighborhood, all Asian stores. So it looks like they have something in common when it comes to this. So it is time you all look for a way to open your own stores and patronize one another. Like the other ones, one of the women said, yes, you are going to do a leg walk. Yes, do it. Walk down to the place. Get what you want, as long as it's a black-owned businesses. Because I don't understand how people are profiting from you, but do not regard or respect you. 
this did not start today did not start yesterday it's been there all this while and uh it is time we fix it if you don't fix it we'll keep getting things like this we'll wake up to things like this all the time why do they not have them in white neighborhoods because they do not want them to benefit from them so they think uh, black neighborhood is the best place for them to be so they push them there give them loan to open uh, businesses and all that so black money does not even spend how many minutes in black owned community rather it goes to asian stores but how are you going to stop all this happening it is by us coming together and opening stores for ourselves and uh, tender the services to ourselves by ourselves I think that is going to stop some certain things because I don't know how you spend your money where you are going to be strangled. I mean, does that really make any sense? It does not make any sense. So like they said, boy, like uh, a very big shout out to black community in that Peckham or something. I mean, they pulled up. They all pulled up. They were protecting. It was a very peaceful protest. And, and the black men also... Uh, protected the black women and other people i mean i saw all the videos and that is very recommendable shout out to every one of you i think next time they will not try something like this and the more we keep speaking up the more we keep saying what we are saying the better for us but i know we've been speaking we've been shouting we've been screaming but it looks like you know our voices are being uh, suppressed and all that but we will never stop not until we get what we're looking for this is what I am going to draw the curtain. Thank you so much for the support and I will see you all in my next video. Bye for now.